Today, I will make this tabletop fountain smart. Right now, the way it works is it has two batteries and a switch, otherwise boring. My idea is to put in some LEDs and to also enable Home Assistant to control this fountain. I would like to encourage you to also try out things like this. Pick a random item in your house and make it smart. What could possibly go wrong? Please pick something battery powered. Don't kill yourself with mains voltage, obviously. There isn't much that could go wrong here, but still be careful. So how do we make it smart? Well, there is an electric pump inside. This pump is directly connected to the battery. So it runs on three volts and I believe that using pulse width modulation, I could find a sweet spot of where the fountain barely works and it runs as silent as possible. One thing is I can't really manipulate the case because it needs to be waterproof, obviously, but I can play around with this thing here. I don't want it to run on batteries anymore, so I can remove this thing and connect it to my electronics. What am I going to use for this project? My plan was to use ESP32 or ESP8266, something like that. All of them allow me to use ESP Home. I can connect them easily to my Wi-Fi and to my Home Assistant instance. Let's start with the smallest one. And always, if you do something like this, before you put everything together, just try if everything works the way you think it works. So first let's measure the current consumption. Let's set the voltage to 3 volts. Mm -hmm. Now these two batteries, they're connected in series. So on one side it's just a connection and on the other side we need to connect our power supply. So this right here is where we need to connect the power supply. This is the positive connector and this is the negative connector. Let's turn it on. And we have a current consumption of about 66 milliamps. But it's dry right now. So in order to make an accurate measurement, I need to put in water. But I don't really want to. So 66 milliamps means that we can't directly connect it to a GPIO. We need a transistor. And so I had one of these laying around. This is an NPN digital transistor. You could also use an N-channel MOSFET or an NPN transistor with external resistors, but this one already has its resistors inside. So it's very convenient for me. And then we need to connect it. The base needs to be connected to the GPIO of our ESP. And the collector will be connected to the motor of the fountain pump which then will be connected to 5 volts. Why 5 volts, you may ask? Well, because I don't trust the linear regulator on this board too much. I would rather connect it to 5 volts and make sure that the pulse width modulation doesn't go to 100% because that would be potentially harmful to our pump here. But if we reduce the duty cycle enough, then it should be safe. Uh, emitter needs to be connected to ground. If we look at it from the top, then this will be connected to pin 4. This will be ground. This will be the pump. This thing fits very nicely here. I don't want to use it with battery anymore. I can remove this. I can also remove this. And I will make some space here. Nice! Future Oliver here. I tried to use ESP8266 and I failed. The pulse width modulation didn't want to work. So I will use ESP32 instead. Here is my configuration so far. I will call it Tabletop Fountain. I'm using an ESP32. I'm using this LED C. 
I'm using a password modulated output on GPIO4 and I enabled the logger, I enabled OTA, I enabled the API and the web server as well as connecting it to Wi-Fi. And I stored my Wi-Fi SSID and password inside of a separate file called secrets.yaml. Now if I run this and upload it first to my ESP32 using the USB connection, I should be able to go to this website here as soon as it runs. Looks good. Now we should be able to connect to tabletopfountain.local. Awesome. This is what it looks like. So for now, I can just control the pump here and we will see if that works as expected. So uh, TPIO4. And if I change the duty cycle, then this is exactly what I expect. But if I think about it, I will need this transistor here. So using this tiny board, I'm on the wrong side here because I need a VN. I would like to connect it to this pins. And here I have D13, D12. So I need to check if they are available. Some of the pins are restricted, but pin 13 is great. Pin 13 is great. I will use pin 13 for this. Let's change it to pin 13. And now I should be able to send this update over the air using OTA. This is the option free. No, nope. great. Over the air. Nope. This works. Why? Doesn't auto work. Oh, now it works. Okay. Awesome. If you want to use your module for anything else in the future, don't solder your circuit to the board. Use connectors. But I would like to integrate this forever in this tabletop fountain. So I will make a permanent connection. Let's see if it still fits in there. This looks amazing, yes. And if you're working with one of these, always use sandpaper. It really makes your life easier. Of course, not too much, but a little bit of sandpaper. Of course, you don't have to use SMD components. <laughs> use something bigger if you want to. Makes your life easier. There's enough space. In order to connect to the fountain, I'll use some flexible cables. Yes. It is running. That is amazing. But maybe one kilohertz is not a great uh, frequency. Let's go to 20,000 hertz. Can't hear it anymore. Yeah, maybe let's go to 30. Let's go ultrasonic over the air. No, no, I don't care. I have USB, I don't care. Not much difference, but yeah, it's fine. All right, let's stop, let's stop, let's stop, let's stop. There is one thing I didn't think about. This thing is an inductive load. So this stores energy. And if this transistor is turned off, then it would be very helpful to have a diet here. Otherwise, this poor transistor might die. Yeah, so let's add this diet. I have the perfect diet for this job very tiny shot guitar. So it's very important that you connect the cathode to 5 volts, otherwise this will conduct and just die. Maybe it also changes the sound, let's see. 
No. <laughs> it's still annoying. <laughs> but hey, we can control it using a computer. That's great. Now, I would really like to also add some of these addressable LEDs here. I have a waterproof tube, so maybe I will also put some of them into the water. These are addressable LEDs. They are amazing. If you're interested in addressable LEDs, check out my video about addressable LEDs. I will use this very thin cable because otherwise it will be visible here. First things first, ground. Good. Now, which chip will I use? Most likely 12. 12 is great. Is 12 great? No, maybe. 27 or 26 yes this is great 27 or 26 so let's use 27 ground goes to ground vcc i connected this led to pin 27 and then the output of this led goes to this leds let's see new pixel i have six leds and 27 green, red, blue, and white. These also have a white channel. I don't know about the variant. Let's just see. Ha! Huh, over the air works. Tape top fountain. Oh yes. Neo pixels on. It looks like, looks like all of them work. The pump also works. Okay, everything works. One last thing. I don't want my micro USB to be connected here. I have an old cable. I think it belonged to a dead mouse or something. Usually USB is not used for power only, but also for data. And we're not going to use data in this case. We might have to do something with the data lines, but let's see. Black is ground, red is five volts, green for data plus, white for data minus but we're not going to use data here. So we don't need the shield. Let's remove the shield, connect it to ground and VCC. And now let's see what the PC does. MacBook just sends power to the board without any issues. That's great. Charger. That also works. Two more chargers. Um, cellular line charger works the final boss an old iphone charger also works okay perfect then i will just keep the data lines floating cut them and put everything together it's time for the ugly part hot glue yeah the waterproof part needs a lot of hot glue this looks good Will it be waterproof? I don't know. We will find out. <laughs> awesome, it works. And that's it. I really hope it still works. It has an interesting look to it. <laughs> and it works. You can also make the water go faster. Not bad. I'm pretty happy with the results. Now, I think it would be absolutely awesome if the water would be a little bit like milk. So not fully transparent. If you have any suggestions what I should mix into the water, please let me know in the comments. I will definitely not use milk because in a few days um, this is not going to be great. 
Any other suggestions? Otherwise, I hope this video was inspiring and helpful. If you would like to learn more about ESP Home, check out this video. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.